Ah, my friends, very nice to see you. It is bewitched, really. For more than a month now, I'm, I'm fighting with clear sky. And don't get me wrong here, I don't have a problem with uh, photographing in clear sky. It can really be funny from time to time. But meanwhile, I really, really have a requirement for getting a really fantastic and epic mountain scene, maybe, with dramatic sky. And so, and so what I thought is, I will ignore the weather. <laughs> Maybe look up there. Everything is blue. Uh, there's no cloud in the sky. Uh, some, some there and where, some tiny clouds, but uh, far away from epic. And what I thought is, it doesn't really matter. I will anyway come here and work on a masterpiece. This means I will try to get out a really great composition. I have no idea if it is possible. I've never been here at this spot. I know this area here. I've often been here, but not this particular spot where I want to go. And I would say, let's have a look how it looks up there. And fingers crossed that it's possible to get a great photograph. And also, when it doesn't look after that, but we have spring here, so yeah, there's really snow is melting down in the valley. Um, there are still some uh, areas with snow coverage and the really tricky thing in the moment is to decide which equipment you take with you. I took my snowshoes with me and I, I left it in my, in my car. I didn't take them with me because when I look there in that direction, we want to go up a little bit higher there. Ah, there isn't all too much snow there. So I think it will probably work without. And fingers crossed that you will not need them. And just look out to this amazing view there. There's a glacier back there and this amazing mountain there at the left hand side. And my grandfather has been here multiple times for painting. And he just has lived behind this hill here, straight behind this hill, so it's not far from him. And I will show you some photographs, uh, some paintings he, he painted here. Or at least I know it for, for, one, for one spot there, a little bit more up there, uh, in that direction. But I think more to photograph more in that direction because the sun will go down more in that direction and it will illuminate this mountain here at the left hand side nicely. We can't see it anymore, it's behind the trees. But yeah, first of all we will hike up higher and let's have a look how it looks from up there. Now I think my grandfather has painted his paintings from down there, you can see a little roof there. Maybe it's already a little bit far away. And there is a farm now. I don't think that there was a farm back then. Could be, I'm not sure about that, but it's not possible to look down there. But it doesn't work uh, for sunset, to be honest. Uh, it could maybe work on sunrise. We would get the sun from the left, illuminating the mountain here, the right hand side a tiny bit. It would not make sense to take the end power mountain into the frame then. It's really just all about uh, the, the, the mountain at the right hand side and the left hand side to frame the image and have, having this amazing valley out there. And today I'm going more to that direction, as I already mentioned. So I think this, is, this works much better because the sun will go down there, illuminating our mountain from the right hand side. The only thing we would need is a little bit of April rain at the distance and yeah, little chances. There is a little chance, not, not, not high, but this doesn't really matter. It's all about looking for our compositions, looking for options. And it could already work from here to get a really fantastic vista shot out there. Having the mountain at the left hand side, having also another mountain at the right hand side to balance in the scene a little bit. Although it is maybe not really necessary when we get to really the sun there and the distance. You know, we need anything to balance this mountain. This, this mountain back there is an amazing visual. I think it's even the biggest mountain of Europe. Well, not really of Europe, it's the biggest isolated mountain of Europe. So this means that the relative height, so this means the highest peak of, of Europe maybe. Well, that's really amazing. I mean, it's such a high visual weight and we need to balance it. Otherwise the image will do something like that. It will, it will dip over. We don't want that. And the sun, the bright sunlight back there could work. But the sun usually is just a tiny spot up at the sky. And when we get atmospheric conditions, something like rain or a mist or something like that, what gets illuminated from, from behind, everything starts to glow and, and this big ball of, uh, of uh, um, brightness is a fantastic balance to the mountain. And 
what, 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 we mi what I'm missing here is, is foreground. So you see we have a little bit of uh, yeah, kind of a path, a trail there. Uh, the chair, it's, it's got straight down there. I don't really like this to be honest. I would uh, yeah, prefer something that goes a little bit more like a curve or something like that. But it, it's difficult. I mean, I don't know what we have a little bit higher up there, but I think maybe we can arrange the one other tree or maybe there's also a trail up there what we could use. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm thinking more and more to get this trail here, this, uh, this road here, or path or whatever it is into my frame uh, leading towards the mountain. I'm just not sure we have already higher trees here, but when they look a little bit more back there, uh, it makes a curve there, maybe it goes a little bit higher up there and we could look over the trees. I have no idea, we will, we will find out that. Uh, I mean, it also could work from, from below there. I don't. Th I just don't think that it will. That it would get a masterpiece. But I think if we had this chance to look above the trees from a little bit high up, it had potential. This place had potential for getting a masterpiece. Yeah, and we got already snow as well. So, but it's not. It's not all too difficult to walk here. There's so many difficult types of snow. You know, uh, there are frozen kinds of snow where you can really uh, walk. Uh, fantastic how you're on. There's also just harsh snow. This is uh, just a thin layer and you can break through. It. It's truly difficult to walk. Uh, yeah, April snow usually is quite smooth and uh, this is April snow but it's a little bit more compact so no problem at all. Oh yeah, the only thing I'm not really happy about is that when you look at the trees they are all empty and uh, there's no definition on. Everything is dry as well because yeah, as I already mentioned, it didn't rain at all over yeah, more than a month now. And that's much. That's really much. Uh, it doesn't look after and it would work from up here at the first sight. So we have all the trees in front of us and it really looks that it were much better to photograph more down there, but when we look there, it always goes a little bit higher and higher. And I think there's also a little bit of a, a middle back there, something like that. And uh, yeah, the snow is, is, is heavier than I, than I thought, to be honest. It, it gets a little bit more uh, difficult now, really heavy. The only thing what's really important here is that you don't give up. It's really important because when you give up, you will go home without a shot or without a an opportunity for, for coming back and uh, photographing at another at time of year. So uh, it's all about enjoying. Also, <laughs> it's really, really hard. I came up a little bit higher and I got out a fantastic view to this mountain. We get even a view to the, the left hand side there where my, my grandfather painted this, that, uh, these two paintings. The only thing we don't have is a clear view in that direction to our valley but it looks that the trees get less and less up there and sometimes the, the road also is a snowless so with a little bit of luck uh, we could really use it as a leading element you know when we just have snow we don't have anything but leads us so we don't see the, the road down there but when, when we look up there we see the road it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, it's a fantastic contrast and yeah I mean it's it's a little bit of luck if we will get exactly that and if we, we don't have that not sure maybe we will find anything else so <laughs> not sure about that it is amazing amazing this this hut over there <laughs> who is living there <laughs> what a fantastic view from there <laughs> it is amazing i think this is already the highest possibility here a little bit more back there and then the yeah, the, the, the path leads really straight into a, a forest and we would not have any possibility anymore to look down to the valley. I think it will be possible. You see these trees here with this hut, what looks really enchanting by the way. My grandfather often painted paintings with a hut and uh, some trees in the distance and also a mountain back there and something like that. Um, if, I find, if I find one, I will show it right now to you. 
something like that. But it's not, it's not the, the subject I want to go for today. I, I think more, I could try to go up a little bit more there where the snow ends there. And this could be enough to look down there, we will see it. And the only problem now, when we really will take this uh, part here now into our scene, that we are careful where we, where we step to. So I will walk around here now and that we don't uh, see the footprints uh, uh, in our photograph. And I'm not sure if I will take the photograph here, but it's something I, I just consider just uh, yeah, to get rid of this issue. Uh, this uh, conifer tree back there doesn't look all the bad. Uh, the solid tree. The only thing is, uh, yeah, I mean, we would have to go a little bit closer, something like that. Anything? I'm not sure about that. But yeah, as you can see, it overlaps up there uh, the, the ridge line of the mountain, and this doesn't really look fantastic, to be honest. We 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 would need to go a little bit high up there, and we don't really have a clear view from up there. It's everything forest, so that's that's not really possible. At the moment, I don't really have an idea to be honest. It's quite difficult to find a working composition here because all the trees are quite high. I mean, we, we can look in that direction, but we always have uh, the trees going over the ridge lines of the mountains, and uh, I'm not happy with that to be honest. But I need to have a break here now. It was quite heavy to come up here. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm absolutely enjoying it to be here, and I think this is the most important thing when you're out for location scouting. I want to get a masterpiece, but it's not the most important thing. I know that I will get a masterpiece. Maybe not today, maybe not here, but it doesn't matter. But maybe I will also find something. We don't know it. First of all, let's have a tea. it is quite difficult to get a shot in that direction here the trees are really an obstacle but I mean the biggest thing the biggest problem here is to find a foreground that really works I, I found some traces down there I think there has driven many any vehicle or something like that in the middle I, I tried with that a, a little bit but it didn't really work but what I found now is something really fantastic it's it's straight afternoon I think we have three hours to, <laughs> to, to sunset or something like that. But the, the mountain in the distance there, and I, I'm not sure if you can see that, uh, I'm at around about, yeah, no, I'm 400 millimeters here. It's my 200, uh, my 70 to 200 uh, millimeters lens with my 2.0 teleconverter on. And I pick just this tiny uh, fraction out where this big mountain, the biggest one from Europe, <laughs> you know, I, I just, isolated <laughs> however I just take a tiny bit of it into the frame and in the distance is another and that what is this what is this there's a paraglider ah this is amazing one more composition I'm at the same camera position like before I just put away my 2.0 teleconverter and what I've done now is I also put uh, this this peak here in the foreground into my frame and I, I have this nice frame here with this mountain and this layering back there I also use a circular polarizer here by the way the only thing you have to consider is uh, I mean we have lots of haze back there we had yeah more than a month no rain so this means lots of haze in there and it is not an enemy. You can really use it to get more layering, to get more, more depth into your photograph. So be careful when you, when you screw on your polarizer, not too much, just a tiny bit. And this really adds here. I get out a little bit, a little bit more details from the mountains uh, back there, but it, it also leads into this fantastically sense of depth. And yeah, I would say, <laughs> let's make the click. I 
think the lesson we can learn here is that there are so many masterpieces waiting out for us. It is just not always so, so obvious which one is the right one. So it's not always like you pick out something you want to photograph and you want to get out a really strong, a really strong image. I, I did this for years and it's really worked, I have to say, but it is all about going to places, um, going home without anything, going to other places, going there again, 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 and then you get out the masterpiece. And I really like to do it like that. But I like more and more to just look around, observe, have a look what, what's happening there and see light spots there and where maybe or anything happening here and opportunities for getting out a really strong photograph. And that's really, that's really, really fantastic. That's, that is what landscape photography is all about. <laughs> so what I will do now is I will go down a little bit more there. I, I think I saw one chance to get a better view to that mountain back there, a little bit more down there, I think. And maybe in an hour or so, the light will be more down. Could also be that we will get out a fantastic photograph there. Let's try for that. So you will never guess what happened. Before we were up, a little bit more there and photographing up to this direction to this fantastic mountain and now I walk down here and I spotted a possibility for a composition for exactly that what I've done here and before when we, when we went up there let me let me first show you this direction here we went up there and what I've said to you is we will go around there because I don't want to step into my foreground I don't want to step into, into this, this uh, road here and I was back there um, and I was engaging with this rock back there and also with a tree back there and then I walked over there and I didn't spot this beauty there. It's really really amazing. We have these, these uh, trees here at the right hand side balancing a little bit this uh, big big biggest mountain of Europe you know isolated one and, and it's, it's really fantastic the sun is going down back there we have lots of haze back there but it's really fantastic because it illuminates us the whole sky we will not get uh, scattered rain April rain back there unfortunately but anyway uh, I think it's, it's really it's really fantastic I mean I, I don't think that it will get a masterpiece now to be honest now but um, yeah, I, I'm happy. It, it's, it's a great photograph. The only thing, what's, what's really important here is when, we, when you're photographing in that direction. So let me show you. When we're photographing in that direction, something like that, we have lots of uh, empty space here. That's not good. That's really not good. We, don't, we want to avoid it. And when we go lower, uh, look at this, uh, this space here between this uh, uh, fence stick here and, and this uh, horizon line there. Um, we have to get sure that when, when, it, when it's too much, we have too much, we have no, even more empty space there. And when we go lower, um, we have the problem that this here hits here back there already. I decided for something that works. It's not hundred percent ideal, but I think with, with this amazing light here at the right hand side, we get this fantastic balance for this image. We have a leading line, this fence back there. Also, when you look down there, ah, it's harsh light. Yeah, it's a truly harsh light down here. But it, it leads us back there to the distance, uh, to, the, to the fence back there and to the mountain. And yeah, it's really great. And uh, I'm really happy with this. From a technical side, I don't use any filters here. Uh, I just use exposure bracketing because we have really harsh light. We have even snow and snow illuminate gets quite, quite bright. I use exposure bracketing with one normal exposed, two underexposed, two overexposed with one stop between. So I would say, let's make the click. month now just clear sky <laughs> and yeah I didn't get an epic shot in the end but I'm not unhappy with the photographs yeah I mean we didn't have a dramatic sky or something like that and or any dramatic weather just had clear sky some clouds there and where in the distance little clouds but yeah it is how it is we can't change that 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will tune in next week as well. That will come a really fantastic video. And thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.